more beautiful people. Very beautiful people. Happy Friday. All right, beautiful people. Oh, I'm gonna hit something. All right, beautiful people. Happy Friday, happy Friday. All right, y'all. Yeah. Hold on. I hope this didn't kick me too far. I see the thing still recording. I think it just pulled up my other screen. Hold on. Okay, we're good. I hit the button by mistake, then it delayed the screen pop-ups. Okay. All right. Happy Friday. It is June 11, 2021, day 177 of year three. A reading through the books of the law and the prophets of the three-year consecutive day count, day 846. You guys, today, we're going to go ahead and start the book of Esther. I'm going to see where we can add in Maccabees at, at the end of all of this, if not at the very end. After we get through everything, because it is it's the last book of the um, Apocrypha of everything. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But we're going to go ahead and start in Esther today. So this is going to be Esther 1, 2, and 3. And then I know today Esther is not such a long read that we're not, that um, we will have time to go ahead and um, hop back over to Fossilized Customs. And pick up where we left off a few days ago. All right, so let's go ahead and do the Shema, which is found in Deuteronomy. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 3. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with you, and that you may increase mightily, as Yahuwah, the Elohim of our fathers, has promised us in the land that flows with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah, our mighty one, he is one. And you shall love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children. And you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gates. And Yahuwah commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear Yahuwah, our mighty one, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before Yahuwah, our mighty one, as he has commanded us. Okay, so let me fix my screen here. And then this. Since we're going back to the reading online. And this one up. Minimize this one.
reset this screen adjustment again. Okay. All right, now. Esther, chapter one. These events happened in the days of King Xerxes, who reigned over 127 provinces stretching from India to Ethiopia. At that time, Xerxes ruled his empire from his royal throne at the fortress of Susa. In the third year of his reign, he gave a banquet for all his nobles and officials. He invited all the military officers of Persia and Media, as well as the princes and nobles of the provinces. The celebration lasted 180 days. A tremendous display of the opulent wealth of his empire and the pomp and splendor of his majesty. When it was all over, the king gave a banquet for all the people from the greatest to the least who were in the fortress of Susa. It lasted for seven days and was held in the courtyard of the palace garden. The courtyard was beautifully decorated with white cotton curtains and blue hangings which were fastened with white linen cords and purple ribbons to silver rings embedded in marble pillars. Gold and silver couches stood on a mosaic pavement of porphyry, marble, mother of pearl, and other costly stones. Drinks were served in gold goblets of many designs, and there was an abundance of royal wine reflecting the king's generosity. By edict of the king, no limits were placed on the drinking, for the king had instructed all his palace officials to serve each man as much as he wanted. At the same time, Queen Vashti gave a banquet for the women in the royal palace of King Xerxes. On the seventh day of the feast, when King Xerxes was in high spirits because of the wine, he told the seven eunuchs who attended him, Nehem, Bizda, Harbona, Bitha, Abak, Abatha, Zethar, and Carcass, to bring Queen Vashti to him with the royal crown on her head. He wanted the nobles and all the other men to gaze on her beauty, but she was a very beautiful woman. But when they conveyed the king's order to Queen Vashti, she refused to come. This made the king furious, and he burned with anger. He immediately consulted with his wise advisors, who knew all the Persian laws and customs, for he always asked for their advice. The names of these men were Karshina, Shethar, Admatha, Tarshish, Marys, Marcina, Marcina, and Mimukin, seven nobles of Persia and Media. They met with the king regularly and held the highest positions in the empire. What must be done to Queen Vashti, the king demanded. What penalty does the law provide for a queen who refuses to obey the king's orders properly sent through his eunuchs? Mimukin answered the king and his nobles, Queen Vashti has wrongly not only Queen Vashti has wronged not only the king, but also every noble and citizen throughout your empire. Women everywhere will begin to despise their husbands when they learn that Queen Vashti has refused to appear before the king. Before this day is out, the wives of all the king's nobles throughout Persia and Media will hear what the queen did and will start treating their husbands the same way. There will be no end to their contempt and anger. So if it please the king, we suggest that you issue a written decree, a law of the Persians and Medes that cannot be revoked. It should be an order that Queen Vashti be forever banished from the presence of King Xerxes and that the king should choose another queen more worthy than she. When this decree is published throughout the king's vast empire, husbands everywhere, whatever their rank, will receive proper respect from their wives. Ooh, they, they was a little scared. Because <laughs> women can be quite persuasive, right? So they really wanted to instill the feelings of the, into all the other women. They didn't want their wives creating an insurrection against them. The king and his nobles thought this made good sense. So he followed Mimukin's counsel. He sent letters to all parts of the empire, to each province in its own script and language, proclaiming that every man should be the ruler of his own home and should say whatever he pleases. Esther chapter 2. But after Xerxes' anger had subsided, also, um, if you were here for um, the portion when we were reading through the legends of the Jews, this actually expounds on this story a lot with Vashti and why she really said no it wasn't just because she didn't want her beauty to be flaunted 
So if you get a chance, go back and read that if you got it. Go read it again. But after Xerxes' anger had subsided, he began thinking about Vashti and what she had done and the decree he had made. So his personal, so his personal attendant suggested, let us search the empire to find beautiful young virgins for the king. Let the king appoint agents in each province to bring these beautiful young women into the royal harem at the fortress of Susa. Haggai, the king's eunuch in charge of the harem, will see that they are all given beauty treatments. After that, the young woman who most pleases the king will be made queen instead of Vashti. This advice was very appealing to the king, so he put the plan into effect. At that time, there was a Hebrew man in the fortress of Susa whose name was Mordecai, son of Jair. He was from the tribe of Benjamin and was a descendant of Kish and Shimei. His family had been among those who, with King Jehoiachin of Judah, had been exiled from Jerusalem to Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar. This man had a very beautiful and lovely young cousin, Hadassah, who was also called Esther. When her father and mother died, Mordecai adopted her into his family and raised her as his own daughter. As a result of the king's decree, Esther, along with many other young women, was brought to the king's harem at the fortress of Susa and placed in Haggai's care. Haggai was very impressed with Esther and treated her kindly. He quickly ordered a special menu for her and provided her with beauty treatments. He also assigned her seven maids specially chosen from the king's palace, and he moved her and her maids into the best place in the harbor. This is something that I've caught the very first time. No matter, no matter how many times I read through this, I literally just caught this today. And I'm, I'm guessing because my eyes are open wide to it now, the type of diet <laughs> you whose people truly had, at least those who weren't in rebellion to them, right? And I want to say it's probably a diet just like Daniel had, remember? Because when they go in, they, they request special diets because we don't eat meat from the king's table. We, we, we cannot eat this type of stuff, right? It says, he quickly ordered, this is verse 9. I'll go back to the very first part of this uh, sentence. Haggai was very impressed with Esther and treated her kindly. He quickly ordered a special menu for her and provided her with beauty treatments. He also assigned her seven maids specially chosen from the king's palace, and he moved her and her maids into the best place in the harem. I'm almost 100, although it don't say it, I'm almost 100% certain. Because when times got tough for her to even call a fast, that would tell me that she had a diet like Daniel's, right? For her, her one of her first thoughts would be, I'm a fast. You tell all the people to fast. I'm a fast and I'm going to have my women fast with me, right? I'm almost certain she had a Daniel like, uh, she had a diet like Daniel, right? Esther had not told anyone of her nationality and family background because Mordecai had directed her not to do so. Every day, Mordecai would take a walk near the courtyard of the harem to find out about Esther and what was happening to her. Before each young woman was taken to the king's bed, she was given she was given the prescribed 12 months of beauty treatments, six months with oil of myrrh, followed by six months with special perfumes and ointments. When it was time for her to go to the king's palace, she was given her choice of whatever clothing or jewelry she wanted to take from the harem. That evening, she was taken to the king's private rooms, and the next morning, she was brought to the second harem, where the king's wives lived. There she would be under the care of Shagash, the king's eunuch in charge of the concubines. So he had a harem for the virgins. Not that the king had been with you. Now you transfer into a different one. Now you go into the place with the concubines. Shayla, the Twabu, Alicia, yeah. She would never go into the... Hold on. There she would be under the care of Shagash, the king's eunuch in charge of the concubines. She would never go to the king again unless he had especially enjoyed her and requested her by name. Esther was a daughter of Abihel, who was Mordecai's uncle. Mordecai had adopted his younger cousin, Esther. When it was Esther's turn to go to the king, she accepted the advice of Haggai, the eunuch in charge of the harem. She asked for nothing except what he suggested, and she was admired by everyone who saw her. 
Esther was taken to King Xerxes at the royal palace in early winter of the seventh year of his reign, and the king loved Esther more than any of the other young women. He was so delighted with her that he set the royal crown on her head and declared her queen instead of Vashti. To celebrate the occasion, he gave a great banquet in Esther's honor for all his nobles and officials, declaring a public holiday for the provinces and giving generous gifts to everyone. Even after all the young women had been transferred to the second harbor and Mordecai had become a palace official, Esther continued to keep her family background and nationality a secret. She was still following Mordecai's directions, just as she did when she lived in his home. One day, as Mordecai was on duty at the king's gate, two of the king's eunuchs, Bigtha and Teresh, who were the guards at the door of the king's private quarters, became angry at King Xerxes and plotted to assassinate him. But Mordecai heard about the plot and gave the information to Queen Esther. She then told the king about it and gave Mordecai credit for the report. When an investigation was made and Mordecai's story was found to be true, the two men were impaled on a sharpened pole. This was all recorded in the book of the history of King Xerxes' reign. All right, so also, if you remember, if you were here when we were reading through the Legends of the Jews, we gave more detail about this as well. And the only reason why Mordecai was able to overhear them two plotting on the king is because they spoke another language and they knew that Mordecai was a Hebrew and they didn't think that he understood the language that they were speaking. But it also gives us more information about Mordecai. Mordecai wasn't just this wise old guy, right? Mordecai was actually a part of the Sanhedrin. Meaning if you're part of the Sanhedrin, you're like in the realm of the kings, but more like on the priestly side for um, Israel. Because to be a part of the Sanhedrin, you also have to know all of the languages of the world, right? Because you're, dis you're discussing matters all over the world, not just with scripture and stuff like that, but national issues, right? So they did not realize that Mordecai was a part of the Sanhedrin. That's what got them in trouble. Esther chapter 3. Sometime later, King Xerxes promoted Haman, son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, over all the other nobles, making him the most powerful official in the empire. All the king's officials would bow down before Haman to show him respect whenever he passed by, for so the king had commanded. But Mordecai refused to bow down or show him respect. Then the palace officials at the king's gate asked Mordecai, Why are you disobeying the king's command? They spoke to him day after day, but he still refused to comply with the order. So they spoke to Haman about this to see if he would tolerate Mordecai's conduct, since Mordecai had told them he was a Hebrew. When Haman saw that Mordecai would not bow down or show him respect, he was filled with rage. He had learned of Mordecai's nationality, so he decided it was not enough to lay hands on Mordecai alone. Instead, he looked for a way to destroy all the Hebrews throughout the entire empire of Xerxes. So now, we also know that, um, uh, what's his face? Haman is a direct offspring of King Agag. Remember the king that uh, King Saul was supposed to kill during the time when Samuel showed up? He said, what is this bleeding of sheep I hear in my ear? Weren't you supposed to kill everybody? You know, and, you know, King Saul was like, listen, we kept the best of everything. We're going to sacrifice it to y'all. He said, that is not what y'all told you to do, right? He said, nobody is to be saved from these people, right? He didn't listen. And during this time where they let the king, where they let King Agag live, he had actually had intercourse with some woman who furthered the line of those who hadn't already been slaughtered. Um, and uh, Haman sprung up out of this particular line, right? So he coming for his daddy's records. When Haman saw that Mordecai would not bow down or show him respect, he was filled with rage. He had learned of Mordecai's nationality, so he decided it was not enough to lay hands on Mordecai alone. Instead, he looked for a way to destroy all the Hebrews throughout the entire empire of Xerxes. So in the month of April, during the 12th year of King Xerxes' reign, lots were cast in Haman's presence. The lots were called Purim to determine the best day and month to take action. And the day selected was March 7th, 
nearly a year later. Uncle JP, morning. Then Haman approached King Xerxes and said, There is a certain race of people scattered throughout all the provinces of your empire who keep themselves separate from everyone else. So we, we know who that is. What we about to know. We about to find out. We know he describing um, Mordecai's people. But listen to how he described. Oh, and if y'all didn't read this part <laughs> in the Legends of the Jews, y'all have to go back. It's, a, it's extremely enlightening. Can't ever let anybody else tell your story and describe you because the story that he gave about us, he was like, they always, they, they taking rest days on the Sabbath, then they get here, then they got to do the prayers and stuff, and by the time they get done with the prayers, it's time to go home. They ain't did no work for the day. They lazy. They trying to get out of this. They trying to get out of that. When they go home, they got to do this, and we can't do this. It's like, what do we need them for? We should just kill all of them, pretty much to sum it up. It was, it was really funny. Um, but go, y'all, just go back and read this whole section with Esther, and um, and I'll I'll link it so you can um, hear it. But yeah, you you got you got to go back and read it. And I'll also put the page where you can actually read it online. Okay. Then Haman approached King Xerxes and said, "There is a certain race of people scattered throughout all the provinces of your empire who keep themselves separate from everyone else." Blessings, Levine. Their laws are different from those of any other people, and they refuse to obey the laws of the king. So it is not in the king's interest to let them live. If it please the king, issue a decree that they be destroyed, and I will give 10,000 large sacks of silver to the government administrators to be deposited in the royal treasury. The king agreed, confirming his decision by removing his signet ring from his finger and giving it to Haman, son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the enemy of the Hebrews. The king said, the money and the people are both yours to do with as you see fit. So on April 17th, the king's secretaries were summoned and a decree was written exactly as Haman dictated. It was sent to the king's highest of officers the governors of the respective provinces and the nobles of each province in their own script and languages. The decree was written in the name of King Xerxes and sealed with the king's signet ring. Dispatches were sent by swift messengers into all the provinces of the empire, giving the order that all Hebrews, young and old, including women and children, must be killed, slaughtered, and annihilated on a single day. This was scheduled to happen on March 7th of the next year. The property of the Hebrews would be given to those who killed them. A copy of this decree was to be issued as law in every province and proclaimed to all peoples so that they would be ready to do their duty on the appointed day. And the king's command, the decree went out by swift messengers, and it was also proclaimed in the fortress of Susa. Then the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city of Susa, fell into confusion. So let me move this out the way. And we'll go ahead and um, pull up. That's the last question. I was about to call it Legends of the Jews again, y'all. Hold on. Let me pull this up to this way. Right Make sure this is right. Okay. All right, y'all, so finally, we get to pick back up where we left off at the other day. That was, we just finished reading Esther 1, 2, and 3. So the page we left off on was page 132, Mithras slaying the bull. Okay, so here's a picture. This case, you don't have the book. You can kind of see that um, this person right here has the bull and is about to sling it right there, right? And you can see this entombed person right here on the side as well okay all right y'all above is a stone carving of mithras as a man slaying a bull the stars sun and moon collectively the Maseroth, were used for most of the human history to shift mankind's worship to the host of heaven which stephen mentioned at acts 742 the zodiac images were brought into the temple itself Ezekiel 8 and 10. Plato wrote that the universe was created in the shape of an X, being the intersection of the celestial equator with the axis of the zodiac, constellations of living animals, since zoo and zodiac are related words. 
Hold on. Okay, so that was in parentheses. It says zodiac, and it was given the explanation of what zodiac is. And in the parentheses, it says constellations of living animals, since zoo and zodiac are related words. Could this X be the image of the beast, an ancient magic symbol of the sun? To the above right, we have a pagan altar piece depicting Mithra slaying the bull, the sun conquering the constellation of Taurus, or Taurus is the bull. This is reverently cared for in the Vatican Museum. Mithras, the sun deity, is shown in the act of Turok, Turok, what is it, Turok to me, T-A-U-R-O-C-T-O-N-Y, Turok to me, I think that's what that says, if not, forgive me for the mispronunciation of this word, Mithras, the sun deity, is shown in the act of Turok to me, slaying the bull, this act showed Mithras to be the supreme power in the universe, able to move the spring equinox out of the age of Taurus, really caused by the procession of the earth, a wobble. In this photo, the zodiac animals are presented along with the sun and the moon in the upper corners. Okay. Okay, so if you didn't see that, if you got the book, I'll show you the picture. Again. Yeah, you might not be able to see it that good, but up here, it shows it going along here. Right? Okay. You might need to get the book to actually kind of see that because it's, it's, it's a real kind of light photo. Okay. Let's see. In this photo, the zodiac animals are represented along with the sun and moon, upper corners. The bull is Taurus. The dog is Canis Minor. The snake is Hydra. The raven is Corvus. The scorpion is Scorpio. And the stars around Mithra's head are thought to be planets, but could also be the Pleiades or Seven Sisters. The lion motif represents the constellation of Leo, the lion. The universe is illustrated as a sphere with the cross on its surface depicted above with, Mis with Mithras standing on it as its supreme ruler with the lion's head. Okay, yeah, I see that. Y'all can see it if you, got, if you got the book. Atlas is seen holding the same sphere with the, intersect, with the intersecting axis on its surface. Okay, so it's going to the next section. It's called Appointed Times. Church Fathers Abandoned Them. The Church Fathers were former pagans, and they allegorized and interpreted much of the scriptures through their pagan lens. They absolutely hated the Hebrews and all that reminded them of them, such as the covenant or law as they interpreted it. Subius in AD 324 wrote, we have transferred the duties of the Sabbath to Sunday. Here's where the shenanigans begin to start, y'all. So you will even, um, well, you will clearly you know that already. But some of the interpretations that the church gives or that they teach in seminary school, that the teachers and the preachers, they kind of teach from the pulpit. It's a lot of this interpretations that um, the pagans interpreted the scriptures as right so a lot of that still sticks today um so it's really good that we understand these things so we can start removing and separating truth from error and putting away the false teachings things that we believe and clung to all our life because if we're ignorant of something where we're not able to see the truth and whole we can only see bits and pieces and things are foggy and don't make sense and some people just decide to ignore it all together just keep on pushing a doctrine which is completely wrong right okay subius in ad 324 wrote we have transferred the duties of the sabbath to sunday who are the we answer the roman state religion's teaching authority the apostles didn't have authority to change the torah and we know they never hinted at such an idea of altering the covenant just three years before in 321 constantine made the first law to keep the venerable day of the sun in translation from latin the edict of constantine says let all the judges and townspeople and the occupations of all trades rest upon the venerable day of the sun but let those who are situated in the country freely and at full liberty attend to the business of agriculture 
because it often happens that no other day is so fit for the sowing of corn or the planting of vines, least the critical moment being let slip, men should lose the commodities of heaven. Given this seventh day of March, Crispus and Constantine being consuls, each of them for the second time, Subius firmly believed that the church had replaced the Hebrews which is called replacement theology, which we can kind of see that a lot today. A lot of people are teaching about replacement theology, but they still have not fully come out of all the doctrines of replacement theology, like all the way. They're teaching half of it, but some of them are still half in it, right? Subius firmly believed that the church had replaced the Hebrews, replacement theology, and had become the new Israel. Early church fathers such as Origen, Subius, Justin Martyr, Ignatius, Bishop of Antioch, John Chrysostom, Augustine, etc., were anti Semites. They changed the Sabbath and eliminated the high Sabbaths given to Israel at Leviticus 23. Another, um, the feast days, the high Sabbaths is another term for feast days, or people call it. The Hebrew word for festival is Chad. C-H-A-G. Although many a Moed is also a Chag, this is by no means always the case. A Moed means appointment, right? So um, if you've ever been inside of any Jewish communities, you would hear them call it um, the Moedim or the, the appointed times or it's the, the feast, the set-apart times that Yahuwah has listed out in Leviticus chapter um, 23. Elohim legislated these appointed times to be just that, a time he has appointed for us to draw near to him, to serve him, to worship him. In Third Moshe 23 or Leviticus 23, we find these appointed times listed. The very first and most important one is the weekly Sabbath, of course. The weekly Sabbath as well as the yearly Sabbath, the Day of Atonement, which is also called Yom Kippur, are Moedim, but they are not festivals. The other appointed times in Third Moshe 23, which is also Leviticus 23, they call it Third Moshe or the Third Book of Moses. Leviticus is the Third Book of Moses. The other appointed times in Third Moshe 23 are also called festivals. If we turn our attention to these festivals of Yahuwah, we naturally ask two questions. What is their significance? And secondly, why are they being done away with by the church? Before we discuss this, please note that the seven festivals are grouped into three groups. First, the festivals of the first moon, Adir. Second, the festival of weeks, Shabuot. And third, the festivals of the seventh moon. Their significance. They are the redemption, they are the redemption model for the tribes of Israel. Um, yeah, this is not okay. I'm gonna cross this out where because this can't be right. It says right here that Yahusha is in each one and they are shadows of things to come for the body. This is some more of that replacement theology and all that stuff. Because if we go through and read the Torah, we know that this can't be true because we're gonna start asking questions. And the main one that pops up is the human sacrifice. How can that be when Yahuwah forbade this, right? Yahuwah forbade this. So let's cross that out. They were they were instituted as a law forever, as we repeatedly read. In the first scriptural month, Abed, we find the Passover or Pesach, which is a word that refers to the whole period of time encompassing unleavened bread. There you go with the Passover with the human sacrifice. Hold on. I'm crossing this out. You will read this, but guys, y'all have to remind. I'm, I'm gonna just keep saying it as long as we can. I'm gonna keep saying it. You have to learn how to decipher truth from error. When you come across it, you need to cross it out and keep on going so it can make sense, right? Based on what you who is saying. Okay. Unleavened bread, matzah begins the next evening, the beginning of the 15th day of the first moon. These shadows were fulfilled. Yeah, see, it's gonna keep intertwining all of these. When Yahuwah said that it didn't do this. Okay, hold on. 
Let me read it, and I'm going to just correct it as we read, right? Okay. Unleavened bread, matzah begins the next evening, beginning the 15th day of the first moon. Here we go again with the shadows. It says, these shadows were fulfilled in the Mashiach, our Passover lamb slaughtered for us. 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. Cross that out. Yes, we read that there, but remember... Human sacrifice is abominable, right? So this cannot be a shadow or something that our Messiah would fulfill, right? Because abomination, um, human sacrifice is abomination and it goes against your whole story. So this cannot be true. That doesn't make sense for this to happen. But we still observe them in remembrance, right? Clearly, we do observe them in remembrance because that's what Yahuwah told us to. To remember what he did the first time he brought our um brought our ancestors out of egypt right it's for us to remember how he fights for us hi titus said a high sabbath is the 14th day of the, of the first biblical month at sunrise at sunset we begin the passover you're correct you're correct titus while the firstborn died in egypt on the passover the blood on the doorpost. Yeah, see. This is this is this is it, it, it's it's a mixing of doctrines, right? While the firstborn died in Egypt on the Passover, the blood on the doorpost prefigured the firstborn son of Yahuwah dying to cover our Torah breaking crimes, right? So see how this, it's it's a play on words, and I don't I really don't think he understands this at this point. Um, see because it's mixing it. I'm, I'm gonna read this again. It said, "While the firstborn died in Egypt on the Passover, the blood on the doorpost prefigured the firstborn son of Yahuwah dying to cover our Torah breaking crimes." We clearly know that the Old Test Old Testament and New Testament says two different things about the firstborn and then the only begotten because Yahushua was not the firstborn. It says he's the only begotten, right? But it calls Israel his firstborn, right? So the firstborn of all of Egypt dying specifically talks about us, the firstborn of Yahuwah, which is all of Israel, right? See, y'all, if you don't read it enough, you don't catch like the little slips, even if they're doing it ignorantly. Some people are doing it ignorantly based on the doctrine they're caught they're taught and they don't catch it okay hold on see so listen to this next part it says the passover was instituted forever but as yahushua fulfilled it his body and his blood took the place of the passover lamb and its blood clearly it's an abomination we kind of talked about it a little bit yesterday with the sacrifices right when he said eat my flesh and drink my blood we're not even supposed to act like we're doing these things right you who would say it no killing right animals nor humans As a matter of fact he's going to require the blood from humans if we shed the blood of man and if we shed the blood of beast that's what it says in genesis right i believe it's genesis chapter 9 that's what he says he is going to require the blood at the hand of man and at beast so he's also going to require He's going to hold accountable also the animals who have shed human blood. Just like he's going to hold humans accountable for shedding human blood and animal blood, right? So that cannot be true. Make that make sense. It doesn't make sense. It's mixing these things. Who is not going to tell us to do things that's going to lead us to death when he tells us to choose life? You have both options before you. You can take this road or you can take this road. But let me help you out. Choose life that you may live, right? Okay. Therefore, we still observe the Passover, but with its remembrance emblems, the unleavened bread and the cup of wine, and the cup of the vine. They'll, oh, yeah, the cup of the vine. The whole communion thing is drinking blood, right? It's, don't do it, y'all. I know what you're taught in church, and it sounds like blasphemy. Sometimes... I get tired of repeating it, but I don't get tired of repeating it. But some people are like, okay, how many times do you want to say it? Because some people may come and may not have heard it before, right? But as you begin to put it together, you will see, wait a minute. Mm, yeah, that kind of goes against. So are we to do this 
in a spiritual fashion and act like we're doing this, symbolizing this? Well, how can you do this, symbolizing this? Because even if you act like you're doing this, symbolizing a certain thing, it's breaking the commands of Yah. It doesn't make sense, people. Why is that? Because Yahuwah never commanded it, right? It's leaven that's been added in. You have to be able to detect it and move past it, right? Cross it out. Keep moving past it. The apostles kept on observing unleavened bread or matzah. And you can read that in Acts chapter 12 and 3 and Acts 20 and 6. Let's see. Yahushua promised that he would not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the rain is physically set up here on the earth and matthew 26 29 the first and the seventh days of matzah or rest days from work the seventh day is traditionally believed to be the day that israel crossed the yam suf or the sea of reeds the mightiest army on earth perished that day and egypt has not recovered from it and the temp and the ten plagues even to this day first fruits okay so He puts, Yahushua presented himself to be the firstborn from the dead on the morning following his resurrection the night before. And that's all he has for first fruits, guys. But this is this is not right. You first fruits is I ain't gonna say it's another whole teaching itself, but it, it can't be because it, it's improperly done and you can't count yourself to be the first of something when everything else up until then you have violated i know they speak from the torah they speak from the the the, the books of moses the law of moses which is also called the law of yah they refer to it because you who gave it to moses moses taught it. they call it the the law of moses it's the law of yah um but you can't violate everything from here and be like oh i won you can't do that it doesn't make sense right because by doing these things, violating every single thing that Yahuwah has told us not to do, that's not going to be, we're not going to be first in the line before Yahuwah because how, you you cheated the whole way through. You violated every single principle I gave you and I told y'all not to do. And now you accept me, you expect me to accept this. Yahuwah say, I do not accept this, right? Oh, I, um. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Hold on. There's a... Mm, hold on. Well, I hope I saved it in my, my notes over here. Hold on. Let me see. It's a scripture. The Yahuwah specifically talks about, about this. Hold on, y'all. I put all my scriptures in there. Hold on. Um, it was in my... I think it was my meat notes. <laughs> meat. Okay, hold on. Right, hold on. Yes, okay. Isaiah 66, verse 3 through 4, right? And this is from the, the KJV version, right? And it says, He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man, right? So, you who have said, I'm... If you kill an ox, if you kill an animal, I'm going to count it just like you killed a man. That's what it says. He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. Make this make sense? Make this make sense with the, with the sacrificing of the animals and the humans? He said, because he said, he that sacrificed a lamb is as he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. This is Isaiah 66, verses 3 through 4. I'm going to keep reading. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. I will also choose their delusions, and will bring their fears upon them, because when I call, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. Yo. That right there says a whole lot. So how how help us make this make sense with the sacrifices. If you who says this about this, 
Isaiah 66 verses 3 through 4. If Yahuwah says this, he said, I, he said, these are their ways. They chose to do this. I did not tell them to do any of this stuff, right? See, because if you go through, you will start recognizing these contradictions. And I like how, um, I'm not sure if y'all saw the video by Yaki yesterday, him and Malachi Maccabee. They doing more teaching on this. I'm like, yes, yes, y'all better teach it. You know, they got a way more huge audience than what i do where they're teaching it and they're starting to see it and they're bringing it out right and it's like y'all make this make sense fam i'm like yes some some yeah keep going keep going <laughs> i'm just waiting for them to get to the the human sacrifice part because they've gone plant-based and they're looking at all this stuff so it's like wait a minute hold on if you who is telling us to do this and we know and we got scientific proof and we're running tests and we're healing people Meat is killing people. Why you? Why would you who would tell us to eat meat even on these feast days? Why would he tell us to do this if this is killing people? Right? You who says they have chosen their own ways. These are the pen, the lying pens of the scribes who are adding this stuff in. They're adding the leaven into Yahuwah's law. It wasn't originally commanded by by. Um, Yahuwah, but remember, there's a, there's a period of time where they keep burning the Torah. We read about it yesterday in Ezra. When Ezra's like, Father, your Torah is burnt, right? And so you got different people that try and rewrite it. As they rewrite it, they're adding in more and more leaven, right? And so now people think, oh, yeah, we must do this. We we need to slaughter lamb for Passover and eat it. I used to think that. I really used to believe that till I went plant-based i'm like oh ugh, ugh, father okay if this is what you command i'm gonna do i'm just eat like a little a very little piece because something ain't right about this so i, I want to gag right now but if you command this i'm gonna do this i was like but this ain't right this ain't right i'm like okay but i'm gonna do it but i'm like something's not this 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 is not right and then i began to notice what yahuwah says about the blood and what i began to notice about the sacrifice even in the priesthood right even in the priesthood it's like father okay so you're telling us to be set apart. You even say between the husbands and wives that the husband can't sleep with his wife while she had her, has her menstrual cycle because the blood will defile. She's defiled during this period until her body is cleansed. But if her husband comes into her, he also becomes defiled and he's made unclean. Yet you're telling the priest to drain the blood and then take some of this blood and flick it on the people? So... To help me understand, maybe I'm seeing this the wrong way, Father. Maybe I got a real trumped up <laughs> interpretation of this. I said, but if you're telling us even in our personal life, in our marriage, in our bedroom, not to do this because the blood defiles. Why would you tell the priest to take the blood of an animal, mind you? I said, wouldn't my blood be more cleaner than an animal, even if it flowed from my JJ? Wouldn't that blood be cleaner than taking the blood of an animal, Right. Wouldn't that be cleaner than taking the blood of an animal and taking blood from animal and flicking it, sprinkling priests who had taken all this time to cleanse themselves inwardly and outwardly, right? They put on clean linen. I said, and then to go back and then to defile them with animal blood. I'm sorry. I'm like, Father, you got to help me. I said, because I don't understand this. I said, this looks nasty. I said, and I'm just thinking about my personal self. I ain't, I ain't saying I'm a priest, and I don't, I ain't saying I go do sacrifices. Maybe there's an understanding that I don't quite understand yet. But when I go take a bath, I don't want somebody to come flicking blood on me, because that means I need to go take another bath. But after they flick the blood, you don't require them to go get another bath, and so they just go on walk around looking a bloody mess. Something's wrong with this. It don't make sense right so when you get into all this it's like huh. and you just kind of you just kind of you keep on reading and you looking and you start searching to see if somebody can explain what you just uncovered like somebody else has to be asking this question right somebody else has to be asking this question right because you're thinking and you're looking and i'm pulling all the scriptures aside i'm like this is wrong i said because this goes against all of this right and i'm gonna read it again isaiah 66 verse 3 through 4 and read you can go back and read it all in context this, the whole thing is talking about this right i just kind of highlighted this portion um and then i'll read what yeah is genesis 9 genesis 9 and 5 um matter of fact let me read that first and surely your blood of your lives will i require 
at the hand of every beast will I require it, and at the hand of man, and at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man, right? Same thing. I'm going to get beast for killing man, and I'm going to get man for killing man and beast. That's at the beginning. Listen, Hosea 8 and 12 through 14 says, I have written to him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. Listen to this. Listen to this, y'all. Right at the Hosea chapter 8, write this down too. I have written to him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. They sacrificed flesh for the sacrifices of my offerings and eat it. But Yahuwah accepted them not. Now will he remember their iniquity and visit their sins. They shall return to Egypt. For, it, for Israel have forgotten his maker and built the temples. And Judah have multiplied fenced cities. But I will send a fire upon his cities. And it shall devour the palaces thereof. Malachi 3 and 6. I am Yahuwah. I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Right? And go back and read Isaiah 66 again. He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificed a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offered an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways and their soul delighteth in their abominations. And because they did this, I will also choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. Guys, make this make sense, right? And even as I go through... And even 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 this year when we're talking about the sacrifices and it's like, oh, it's a cookout. I'm like, eh, this ain't really good. It was a cookout, but Yahuwah didn't authorize this cookout. It's a family meeting, but he he didn't he didn't authorize these sacrifices. So even daily as I'm going through, I'm like, oh, oh, wait, wait. It looked like I'm going a little bit deeper down this rabbit hole, y'all. Like seriously. Like, um, who was it yesterday? Joy, she came out and said, We said it, no meat at all, right? It it there's no there's no way you can eat meat without ingesting the blood. Even if it's well done, like you have to cook the blood away, which is still inside the, the sinews and the and the veins of the, the meat, the steak that you eat, isn't there. Although you burnt it up inside of it, you, you're still consuming it. You're consuming death, right? This doesn't make sense, y'all. It it that that doing those things don't lead us to life. It literally leads us to the grave a lot earlier. And we can prove that in our life. Just look at a meat eater and a plant-based eater. Who lives longer? Who looks better? Who looks older? Who looks younger? Which one of these is consuming life and which is consuming death? Right? We have to be, even though this may be all chopped and screwed and the lying pens of the scribes have infiltrated the old and new, Yahuwah always leaves us a witness, right? So even if we can't find that witness in the scriptures, we should be able to find a witness in nature, right? We should be able to find a witness in nature to be able to decipher truth from error. And when we can see it here, we should be able to go and separate the truth from error and begin just to pull out all that pertains to life, right? And what will be left is the um, the uh, the lies and the leaven and stuff that's been added. Yes, Stephanie, I am plant-based. I haven't eaten meat in years. She asked, am I vegan? Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll use, I'll use the term vegan sometime, but I, mm -hmm. I drop some. um, but I'll, I use plant-based most of the time for some time people, they don't show you any kind of slack or whatever. So when I was transitioning from me, I was kind of like vegetarian, but I was still like kind of eating cheese and uh, eggs and stuff. It's like you can't. I was calling myself vegan, but they was like, "Well, technically you're vegetarian because you're still." I was like, "Okay, whatever," <laughs> you know. So I'm like, "Okay, so I use plant based. So no meat, 
I, I would say 100% no dairy, but it's a coffee creamer that I love. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to confess my sins to the brother. I love the sweet cream coffee cream or the liquid cream, right? So that's probably about the only dairy that I still use. Yeah, I think it's considered dairy. Yeah, because it now I could use the powdered one, and that's non-dairy, but I don't like powdered cream. I'm really trying to just wean myself off the coffee altogether, but that's, I, I still, although I don't, I don't drink it every day, I will use the sweet cream creamer. So I say, I say plant-based, that is. So y'all know that about me. I like the sweet cream creamer. Pray for me. <laughs> so, but I, I say I'm plant-based, you know, but um, I'll, 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 I'll rarely use that because I'm really trying to completely <laughs> do away with it, right? Because it also, and that, that's why I don't use it that much because I'm lactose intolerant which a lot of people of color are because our body was not created to ingest milk from other animals, right? Once we're weaned off our mother's teeth, that's it. We have no more need for milk at all, right? No more milk, right? Um, but it, it messes with my stomach even, even when I have the coffee. So that's what really kind of keeps me from indulging in it too much. But I haven't found a replacement. That's why I was like, you know, I'm going to just do away with it all together, so... Yeah, so I'm, I'm plant-based, Stephanie. Okay, let's go back to this. So the next one is the, the um, the, the feast of weeks, right? So we can see, and I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna just keep reading, but I'm gonna keep calling it out based on the truth and stuff, you know, because he's still mingling like the blood sacrifice and stuff in here. He got all the other stuff right, but it, he still hasn't removed all the the leaven from the blood sacrifice. So where we at? Fifty six minutes, okay. Okay, Shabuot. The Feast of Weeks, called Pentecost in Greek for count 50 or 50 weeks or seven weeks from a count of Sabbaths from Passover. Traditionally, this is what this is thought to commemorate the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai. This is the event recorded at Acts 2 and saw the fulfillment of the promise of the renewed covenant given at Jeremiah 31, where the Torah given at Sinai was written on the hearts of the 120 Nazarene assembled in the upper room of the temple. If they had not been observing this, they would not have received the Ruach HaKodesh. They also call the Ruach HaKodesh the Holy Spirit. But simply, Ruach HaKodesh simply means set-apart spirit, right? The set-apart spirit of the Yah. Constantine redesigned its determination at the First Council of Catholicism at Nicaea in 325 CE and involved the vernal equinox in setting it. He also set up the policy that if ever Easter and Passover occurred on the same day, Easter would be observed the following Sunday so as not to have anything in common with the hostile rabble of the Hebrews. <laughs> when the taught ones were assembled on the Shabuot, as we read in Acts 2, the set-apart spirit was poured out on them. Nevertheless, they simply kept on keeping Sabaoth year by year. Acts 20, verse 16, and 1 Corinthians 16 and 8. The third part, those of the seventh scriptural month have never been fulfilled, but their fulfillment is coming. Okay, so it's going in here. It says, Yahushua was born on the first day of Sukkot and circumcised on the eighth day. Um, that's what it say. I don't agree with that. Um, based on what I know, it says, uh, okay, and it's not gonna be at his coming. It's at Yahuwah's coming. It says, at his coming, he will bring his not serene bride under his tent and consummate marriage with her. He will fully inhabit us, his body, and he will truly say, I am my beloved, and my beloved is mine. Okay. Let me just say this. We okay. So, in order to be able to understand this, we have to know and understand all the times where Yahuwah points out who the Mashiach or who the Messiah, Messiah is one word, who the deliverer of Israel is, right? You have to realize why, first of all, let's establish why a deliverer is coming, right? Why is a deliverer coming? He's coming to deliver his people from the bondage that has from the nations that have held them captive for all these years, right? That's why a deliverer was sent to Egypt the first time, right? It was Yahuwah who sent the deliverer. Now, the people, 
didn't marry their deliverer, right? They were in relationship with Yah. The deliverer was to, the one to bring the message. All right, Yah says time. Let's roll out. He's literally like the captain of the army, right? Or let's, uh, I say the first in command, right? And the captain, let's call the captain Yah, right? But the cap, the, the, the first in command was always relaying to the people what the captain was saying, right? This is what the captain said. This say what he said we need to do. The people didn't fall in love with the first in command. They fell in love with the captain, the order giver, right? Not the one who was relaying the commands to the people. Y'all get that? So that's what a deliverer is for, right? You don't marry or deliver. You don't, I mean, you, you, you're in some type of relationship with your deliverer. But as we're looking at it with Yah, it's to return us back to Yah, not to you, not to the deliverer, right? I, ho I hope that makes sense because people get all kind of twisted and screwed when they go to explain this. Another way we can see this, if okay, so the New Testament teachers and church doctrine teach you that it's the Father and His Son, J.C. or Yahushua, Yeshua, whichever term you want to call Him by, um, Yahweh Shai. But let's go back to what Yahuwah's law says about um, a bride and who can be taken as a bride and what the requirements are between a father and a son and if they can share women. Did we think about that? He said it's an abominable thing if a son, say a son is married to a bride, then that, and say something happens with the son, the son died, right? You can't go marry the son's father. That's abomination. He said, that's confusion. He said, don't do that. That is your daughter. We think about that? We don't think about that. It's the same principle. But what's happening right here is in the New Testament is being chopped and screwed in every which way, y'all. And it's like, this don't make sense. This is going against Yahuwah's law. He specifically laid these things out. But it's like when you read the New Testament, it's like every, it's a mix of truth and error nonstop. It's like on the highway going 200,000 miles per hour. And people don't, what was that? What was that? And it looks like you ever seen something going so fast that it looks like a smooth, clear picture, but it's going so fast that you can't, you can't really tell. And if you touch it, you might get hurt. It is weird, y'all. But everything Yahuwah says over in his covenant, the leaven has been added to connect it to the new and everything is directly against. It's completely flip flopped in what Yahuwah says. And a lot of people that are teaching, that are, they are, they're trying to teach it from a spiritual perspective, but even teaching it from a spiritual, a spiritual perspective is still like mixation and confusion. It, it doesn't make sense. It, you can look at it. Oh, that, that, that makes logical sense. You know, at first glance, if we don't realize what Yahuwah said, well, wait a minute, that goes directly against this. And this, this is like, you can list it out. Everything that Yahuwah has said, you can find the exact opposite being done over in a New Testament. And it's like, wait a minute. But at first glance, it looks like it's okay. All right. Okay. It looks like it's okay. And it looks like, okay, yeah, this is just the proper way we do this until we really start comparing. That's why I said, guys, y'all should really just take some time about a year and just read nothing but the Old Testament just back to back, back to back. Genesis to Malachi, Genesis to Malachi, Genesis to Malachi. Learn it just as well as you learn the New Testament and then begin to compare, right? You should do your own due diligence and do those things before you start trying to say that, mm, that no, that don't sound right. Ugh. Well, explain this. Who's the, let's go back. Okay. Before anything, let's establish the authority. Who is the authority, right? Who is the authority? Okay. So everything we look at needs to be based off of what he has said, right? Okay, nobody can deny that. Okay, so he said this. And what about this? That looks don't that look flip flop to you? Now that you put it that way, they do look a little flip flop. But what do we do about this? Right? How how do we reconcile this, right? And which do we obey now, right? And I would always say go with the authority, go with what y'all has said, because y'all say his ways is life, right? You got two paths before you. Choose life or choose death. Or choose death. He said, let me help you out. Choose life. Everything I say is life. 
your Torah is truth, right? Torah is truth, instruction. You who let you who will be truth and every man be a liar, right? So this is how I keep myself balanced with everything. I go back to what you was say. Even when I get stumped about something or something is it's sounding so good. I just let me pause. I'll come back to this in about a week. Let me just let me just go over it and look this to make sure I'm not getting twisted up again. Right. And I just go through and I take my time. If I need to rewatch something, I'll rewatch something. I'll go through. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Because if I'm wrong, I need to correct this sooner rather than later, right? Because, uh, okay, uh, I can't be teaching my family something that's wrong. Let's go back. I'm like, Father, I don't, I don't, I don't see how this can be the truth. What I see here, based on this, even if we wanted to use spiritual analogies and stuff, I said this, this still, this still goes against this. It still goes against what you say. I know the examples that they give community. Oh. We do this in remembrance of him. Okay. You're taking, oh, you who would say, do this in remembrance of him, of what he did for us, but you're taking and mixing what he said to remember with something that he said, I don't want you to even act like you're doing, right? So now you're act, you're remembering him, but at the same time you're remembering him, you're doing the act of something that he did not uh authorize eating flesh and drinking blood and you're acting like you're doing this thing joy shalom says and it's like guys how do we reconcile this right and some people they don't want to reconcile they just want to leave it just like this let's just keep doing it like this we're remembering y'all yeah, but we're doing this to remember to jog our memory that's that's mixation it's disgusting what do you will say let's just go back to it i'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and read it again i'm gonna I'm pull up my notes from yesterday We'll go back and read it. When we get to that point, let's just go back. We're going to read it. We're going to read it, right? Hosea 8 and 12 through 14. I have written to him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. They sacrificed flesh for the sacrifices of mine offerings and eat it. But Yahuwah accepted them not. Now will he remember their iniquity and visit their sin and they shall return to Egypt. For Israel has forgotten his maker and buildeth temples, and Judah have multiplied fenced cities. But I will send a fire upon his cities, and I shall devour the palaces thereof. Malachi 3 6 I am Yahuwah, I change not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Isaiah 66 verses 3 through 4 He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificed a lamb, the lamb of God, lamb, lamb, y'all still worshiping lamb, lamb. He that sacrificed a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offered an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burned incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways. He just listed these, these, these. These are their ways. These are not my ways. Let me read them again. They, yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. What what abominations? What ways? Let me just read it again. Go back up. He that killeth an ox is as he slew a man. He that sacrificed a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delights in their abominations i will also choose their delusions since they want to do this they want to choose their own ways i'm going to choose their delusions i will also choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because when i called none did answer when i spake they did not hear but they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which i delighted not how much more clear can it get how much more clear can it get, y'all? And it's like, I'll, I'll keep on saying it. I keep on repeating myself. I'm like, y'all, please, just go, 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 pull it up for yourself, right? Joy said, no. Hold on, hold on. She said, we were just talking about choosing life last night on live. Do you fall? Yes, I listened to Yaki. I, I mentioned his thing uh, that they did last night. I'm like, yes, Yaki, they're doing it. They're realizing this. I, look, remember how I told y'all yesterday? Sometimes you don't see some of this 11 until your your life has to go 
in the direction of truth before the next level can be open to you. Like if you need to get to the store, you ain't even going to see where the store is at till you get moving. Like you have to get moving in order to get moving. In order to see you, you have to move and you have to go. So as long as you're going in the direction of truth, more things will be uncovered. More things will become clear to you and you can begin to see and it all begins to come into focus as, as we get rid of the the flesh consuming eating the flesh which you who would say it's abominable matter of fact i don't even want man killing animals yet the whole western world not i would say the whole world but it's really pushed big here because judah is kept within the borders of america the daughter of the great whore right it, it's pushed big here it's keeping us asleep it's keeping us doing the abominable things delighting in abominations right Killing flesh, hunting, meat every which way. What you want? Air, you, you, you can sit in your house now and summon it to your door. Y'all, you. Should I go read this again? Should I read it again? Isaiah 66, Hosea, Genesis 9, 9 and 5, Hosea 8. Like, I hope y'all wrote those down. I'll post it for y'all just in case y'all didn't catch it. But it's like, man, this is. I'm like, Father, please open their eyes. But if you if you if you if you love the meat, if you love the kings, I ain't, you know, because I used to eat meat. I used to eat a lot of meat. I even used to eat the pig, bacon on everything. So I'm not coming down on anybody. I'm just saying, when you begin to clean up your life and push those things away, you realize that wait a minute, we're not supposed to be consuming this. And then you go on and test it. Wait a minute, my body feels better. This is healing up. I stopped having these issues. Wait, it's something to this. And you start looking more into it. Now, that level of that, that film that was over your eyes where you couldn't see, now it becomes clear. The cataracts is clearing up. Oh, shoot. Wait, what? Why my eyes hurt? Morpheus, you've never used them before. Right? <laughs> and it's like when we stop eating meat, our eyes become open. And you're like, what? And you sick about what in the world you've been doing? What have I been doing? This is true. Do you want to see how much deeper the rabbit hole get? Yo, so, guys, we're going to stop right here. We're at, at 111. I'm going to make my little mark right here. We need to finish right here. But this, I, I got on this because it's, it's leaven readily mixed even through this truth, right? So, like I said, when we, as we're waking up, because lies have been pushed so long, and it's been thoroughly mixed with the truth for millennia as we're coming into the truth. We're probably going to be the generation that begins to truly separate truth from error. It's like some of these things have to be rewritten, right? I'm I'm determined before I leave this place, I'm going to have a pure, un, unhumanated, like they call it, pure, unadulterated, unhumanated Torah strictly from y'all. Like, like as we said, Give it to me. Your Torah is burnt. Like everything. We read that yesterday. He was doing a fast and he said, 40 days. He said, I'll, I'll let you. He said, nobody else do it, Father. Give it to me. Because they, they, they didn't burn every single time we had the Torah. They burnt it up. Right? He said, your Torah is burnt. Give it to me. He said, okay. I need you to fast 40 more days and get you five good scribes. He said, and I'm going to put my spirit on them and we're going to do this thing. And during that 40 days, they rewrote the Torah. They, Matter of fact, they wrote how many books? Don't quote me on the books, but they wrote so many, so many books. He said, this portion give to the wise and to the unwise. And he said, these right here reserve only for the wise, right? So even with that, the portion that's being reserved for only the wise, I believe it's for those of us who are actually coming out of, wait a minute, these teachers are, we shouldn't be doing this. And now we get some of the deeper teachings because now we don't put the flesh away, the flesh from the king's table away from us. And now we begin, we, um, begin to get more understanding and revelation. We can see it happen. Think about what Daniel did. No, we don't eat the king's meat. And what happened? Yahuwah gave them more revelation. He was able to funnel it in a body that wasn't defiled and full of death, right? Say, I said, Pooh. Even today, we read in Esther. We noticed for the first, at least I noticed for the first time, even after reading Esther so many times, it said he the the um attendant quickly gave Esther a special diet. And if we know Esther to be 
one of the most high's daughters hadassah she requested a, a a diet just like daniel did how do we know right because yahuwah used esther to save the entire nation of our people the thing that king saul had screwed up he used esther to fix it right so may we be like esther and daniel and put away the meat from the king's table Take all the, all, the, all the death that we have been consuming, whether it's meat or bad death doctrine, then push to us from people who didn't necessarily know that they were poisoning us. Some do and some didn't, right? People can only teach. They can only give you what they have, right? But now that we know, we can see, mm, we need to adjust this, right? So maybe we we'll all adjust to the truth. Put away all the leaven. Put away all the error and choose a life. Let's choose the red pill as Yahuwah is offering us. He's like, I'm only offering you the truth, right? And once we get the truth, now it's up to us to make the decision, right? Hallelujah. All right, y'all. So we're going to pause right here. So we read um, Esther chapter 1, 2, and 3. And we hop back over to fossilized customs and we read pages 132 through 134 we'll pick this back up here tomorrow Let me make sure so, all right so every time we run across it we're gonna bring it out that's 11 don't believe that and this is why go back and check go remember keep y'all as your foundation if you keep y'all as your compass going through everything even if we get halted okay wait let's let's go back let's reground ourselves okay this is what y'all says does this here line up with everything Yahuwah has said? That's off a little bit. Why is that off? Is, is it something we missed? Or is it really off and it's going to bump us over a notch, right? You no, know, like that plane, you're going straight. And if you don't notice early that you've been bumped over a notch, by the time you get all the way down here, you are way off course. Somebody bumped you off a notch and you didn't recognize it. We need to begin to recognize early if we've been bumped over a notch because we don't want to get too far. Then it's going to take a lot more time. It's going to take a lot more gas that we would not have had to use had we just been aware and fully awake at all times and paying attention to our surroundings, constantly checking the compass at every given moment, making sure everything lines up, right? That's what Yahuwah is taught. That's what Yahuwah torah does for us it causes us to be aware it causes us to be responsible it causes us to take accountability for our own life and what's happening in our life okay why is this happening okay let's check the compass okay what's off what's off what's off what's off i'm off what did i do wrong let's fix it but we get too far down the road and now we need help getting out of a ditch that we could have truly avoided right all right y'all so with that being said let's go ahead and do the blessing. Like I said, I'm going to put those scriptures that I read um, a few times. I'm going I'm to I'm post them. Matter of fact, just for y'all real quick. Let me see if I can copy and paste right here real quick. Just in case some of y'all forget to come back here. Okay. That's the first one. Isaiah 66, 3 and 4. You got Genesis 9 and 5. Take them, put them up later when you get a chance. You know, do your own due diligence. Um... We got Hosea chapter eight, and it's more than these, but these are these were the recent ones that I found. Um, like the last couple of days, where I'm doing more into this, where I'm working on my whole looking at all these sacrifices and how it's been laid in here and all chopped and screwed and twisted and being taught wrong, right? Okay, and then you have Malachi, the famous Malachi three. And six, I am Yahuwah, I change not. Therefore, are you sons of Jacob not consumed? Okay. Um, but like I said, I'll put them in there, but I'll also put the entire scripture. I can only post so so many words or characters in the chat. So I'm going to not just put the scriptures in the description box and in the comment section, but I'm also going to give you the entire scripture so you can see. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> put it in there with my highlights. I'm going to capitalize some of the words and some of the sections of the scripture <clears throat> excuse me to bring your attention to it like pay attention to this because sometimes you just read and read and the words run together but you need to use bowls and capital letters to bring your attention to something eh, did you see this pay attention to this oh what that's how it was the other day i was like yo it's crazy so this gets more exciting by the day <laughs> all right y'all so the blessing is found. Where's the 
this so far. Okay. I had to put so many notes in here and push the blessing all the way down here. Okay, the blessing is found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. Remember the first 21 verses is the Nazarite vow. Excuse me. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, May Yahuwah bless us and keep us. May Yahuwah make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. All right, beautiful people. Oh, and now I'll share that. Um, uh oh, I closed. Did I close that? Oh, I thought I closed it. I just minimized it. I'll share the um the thing from Yaki. Um, like I mentioned earlier, enjoy mentioning. I'll I'll share it. In here too so if you didn't see the matter of fact i'll share the last two that they did where they're talking about this and they're bringing it out i'm i'm, I'm excited to see them walk this thing all the way through i'm like oh they're there they tell you they still learning they pulling stuff out it's like they can no longer consciously teach a thing that they know is killing people right so they they trying to like we've been trying to make sense of this and going through and let y'all lead us they doing the same thing i'm like yes yes we ain't crazy <laughs> It, it, oh my gosh it does my heart it's so good to see other people is beginning to come out and say this i'm like yes oh my gosh because at the time i felt like father just bill has killed all the prophets and you, you who was like elijah get up i got seven other seven thousand other prophets out there that ain't bowed that needed jezebel and it, it i am so ecstatic to see other people begin to come out and just teach this like they're they're starting little like wait a minute y'all we ain't, i don't think we're supposed to be doing this i'm like yes keep going keep going you know i'm kind of i ain't gonna say i'm surpassed them because they still they've been doing it for a little while now they decide we 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 cannot not say anything anymore we have to say something um so but they i i love how they're doing it because they got they got a whole nother side of the truth that they're bringing based on a plant base and them actually having laboratories and he's a, a the a chemist and stuff and he's a certified he's a master herbalist so all the things like the the medical things from that he's bringing it the truth from that it's like proof <clears throat> y'all guys y'all y'all have to watch if y'all haven't seen it it, it it's just gonna blow your mind right it's like the truth that's been in plain sight all this time it's like we're now being awakened to it, right? And it's like, yo, but it's been here all the times, but we just couldn't see it. I think as technology has gotten better, clearly over the decades, we've gotten access to more technology, even our people where we can show proof and show things. And we got our people who are our master herbalists and, and they have credibility and results and testimonies from people who have been, um, have been actually living this thing out. Yes yeah it let's see it's uh if it's it's a sign it's hold on what's say it's a sign if sin to eat flesh i i don't know you may have been missing a word i'm trying to see what you were trying to say if it's a if it's a sin to eat flesh if it's a sign if it's a sin to eat flesh type that out again joy <laughs> i don't want to screw it up what you were saying Hmm. I'll, I'll wait for a second um but yeah clear clearly you know you can eat flesh you know you can eat it but the body really and we know that the body really can't push it all the way out because we talked about this the other day that's how people get colon cancer you get colon cancer from meat that putrefies in your intestines it's a sign of sin oh okay it's a sign of sin to eat flesh yeah so i mean you can do a women shucks everybody gotta grow right when we we know better we do better and i know it's a, sometimes it's hard to break away from things you've been doing for so long you just have to train yourself to do what's right look and see and then some people you 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 got to look at it too do you really want to follow y'all and do what's right and do you really want to live or do you want to find everything you can hold on to to hold on to all the things that you are doing wrong to justify what you're doing right now i ain't telling y'all you sinning you eating flesh but i'm just show you what you who it says and now people like show me in the scriptures okay we gave you scriptures okay well hmm. okay but the the real testimony and the real test of this is What's happening to your body when you're consuming the things that Yahuwah said you shouldn't consume? Even some of the things that have been marked in here by the lion pens of the scribes as... What? Girl, did you, did you cut that off? 
Yes, and I just ready, ready to get that in. Okay, give me a sec. Go, go ahead, slide it in, cause it's cold. Go ahead, take it and slide it in. It's cold, but it's hot. No, it's not hot yet, but you can see the light. Go ahead and slide it in. Okay, I'll do it. Well, give me a second. I'm about to end this. Um, but we can we can tell just by the way our body reacts. Can you post a link? Yes, I'll post a link. Matter of fact, I'll post a link right now for y'all. Hold on. Let me, let me pull it up real quick. Hold on. Let's see. While we're here, I'll post it now just in case because I know some people, they get off about their day and they forget about it. So let me, I'm going to pull it up now for y'all key. Okay. I post it in both places. Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, I'm going to post the last two. This is the one. Don't add up. Okay. Absolutely. It's not just, we didn't come up with this. This, look, this been sought out for over 800 years now. Yes. We got all the proof, all the facts, all the evidence. It's been people investigating the scriptures for 800 years. Look, I look like That's look, four or one. five different people who lived in different time periods that arrived at the oh, same whoa. conclusion. The same exact That's conclusion. Wild. So let's read this. That's let's start off reading this. So look, first thing I want to show y'all is the creation story, and I want to break down how the, the the text is different from going okay. to chapter one Post from going to chapter two Let now this is how you know that there are conflict in chapters because even i at one point in my life okay so that's the one from last night you heard him talking a little bit let me go to the one the first one he did <clears throat> right here it's this one your diet is connected Wink. hold on no nope. nope. that's Wink. not it I've i'm been... sorry hold on not it that's not it Hold on. Mom. Yes, Sudi. Hold on. Here we are. Girl, how much makes sense? Hold on. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, it's this one. Yaki speaks about his absence. Yeah, and he tell you why. He just had one running back. around acting like chicken heads. You wonder why you got brothers running around acting like dogs with the pink thing hanging out every day, ready to hump everything. You wonder why you got brothers in this troop with murderous thoughts. Huh, murderous thoughts, ready to kill another brother over a different doctrine. Why are you so angry? All oh, because you eating angry, stressful meat. You are what you eat. And look, not to mention all the sickness and disease this meat is causing you. Yeah. It's yeah. look, it's killing the nation, y'all. I am in the thickets of okay. this killing everybody from this sickness. I if anybody can speak on it, y'all key should be able to speak on this matter. The meat is killing the people. We have documents and scientific re uh, research from the actual laboratories and universities showing you that this meat don't only kill you and is acidic to the body but it actually lessens your vibratory resonance okay so that i just posted that one and let me give you this little 12 minute one he did yesterday where he's talking about protein and this is 12 minutes so i'm gonna give you three links i'm posting it on both places peace 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 y'all climb on in peace little light and healing peace to the gods peace to the earth y'all climb on in climb on in Y'all been seeing a lot of uh, negative comments about the uh, picture I posted of the, to of the turtle and of the, of the uh, elephant. And you know, and I want to tell y'all, everybody on my everybody you, on my post talking about, you know, okay. you get your fuel from protein. So I want to set the record straight because you don't. So y'all climb on in and we're going to. Okay. I see. Okay, y'all. So there we go. There's three links just for those who may not be able to come back later and pull this up. So you can pull them now. I post it. All three of them. One, two, three. Okay, I posted all three of them on Facebook and in the YouTube chat. Like I said, um, for those that come later, they'll be able to see it um, in the comment section pin and in the description box. So when y'all get a chance, um, go through and look at it. You can't see it? Hold on, go through it. Please. Uncle JB, can you see it? I'm not sure how long it takes my comments to show up in there. Um... But I'll respond when I... Let me see. I don't know if I can respond to this. Hold on. Okay, I'll respond to you. I can't see comment. There is one. Hold on. I'll put all three of them in your I can't see comment. Hold on. Uh-oh. I don't want to do this. Okay, it's going gonna, it's gonna to kill my feet. I'm As uh, soon as we end this, I'll put the other two... Or, um, yeah, I respond. I put the other two under your comment. Um, I can't see right here. So just kind of 
come back to that. I think this is gonna it's gonna it's gonna bump me off of here because it brought my thing up. All right, y'all. So with that being said, we already did the blessing. When you get a chance, go through, look at that, check over them scriptures, and just actually pay attention to your life. Somebody said something else too. I think I missed a question. Somebody said something. What? Oh, okay. But that's you. Titus. What what about the foods that are sanctified? So that's fake. Mama. Listen. Why you tell Titus, Titus. Is fake? <laughs> why, I tell, why I tell Titus is fake? He has the question. <laughs> Good morning, Auntie. Love you too. Listen, look, Titus, this is what we're talking about. Yeah, I, I'm not sure how long you've been here, but earlier in today's video, I started bringing up some stuff, even about some of the um, things that the, the priesthood were doing that seems to go against what Yahuwah was said, right? Mom, Even with the splattering Mom, of the blood. Yes, you, good girl. You say that's King of the Beach. We're going to go to the beach, but not today. Not today. Um, we just kind of started addressing some of these things because even the foods that are sanctified, but this is they also, it, it. you put it in your body long enough, it breaks the body down. So that's what we're looking at. We're looking at, okay, so we clearly know, Titus, that there has been 11, not added just in the New Testament, but also in the Old Testament, right? So that's what we're going through. And as we're finding these things, we're like, okay, there there has to be a way to actually prove what's truth and what's error. What better proof than our own bodies? Excuse me. I'm not sure if you're a meat eater or, or not, or if you have had problems with your body. Now, from my personal experience, which is why I start looking I started looking more into it, right? As I began to transition off the meat, you know, from first thing I transitioned from was pig. You know, I I ain't had pig and shucks. I want to say almost when was Jeremiah? But Jeremiah was born, I'm thinking. I think it may have been the year my brother graduated high school. So and I only remember that because I had an episode. We we went to his graduation. So my my second oldest son, he just turned 18, but the one after that is 10 years old is Josh. I was clearly let's see, Josh was born in 2010. Wait a minute. So we, we left that church in 2008. But we st I know we clearly stopped eating pork when we were going to that church. So I wanna say I wanna say I stopped actually well, eating pork. I want to say it was 2005 or six when I stopped eating pork, right? But I was still eating other meats. And then as I was transitioning, okay, um, as I started reading the scriptures and everything, okay, well, we now do the cleanings because I was still doing like a lot of shrimp and catfish and all that. So I was like, wait, we can't even eat this either? <sighs> it took me a while to catch on to that because the pa pasta dishes and stuff, I love Italian food, right? So it's like, Ugh. I'm like, okay, I'm like, Father, you got to help me. I really want to do what's right. So as I began to transition off that, I began to notice different things. My, I, I, was ha I wasn't I was really having a lot of issues at that time. Um, but as I was getting older, look, and I'm only, I just turned 42 this year, right? So, but imagine an entire life eating like hard meats and steak and stuff and being in the military and and all this and i wasn't a big alcohol drinker although i would consume it from time to time it wasn't big but food was my thing right so the burgers and the <laughs> joy said she had the prayer away shellfish <laughs> you know so it's just certain things and, and when i found out about how shrimp was and that uh, i mean some, depending on where you go, if you're not cooking your own, but still, shrimp is like the roaches of the sea. Them and, and crawfish and stuff, mommy, they, they help clean mommy, keep the oceans clean. Mommy, um, mommy, so I was like, oh, you know, but once I got that picture in my mind, I was like, yeah, we ain't doing that no more. Look, girl, stop. Look, I'm, I'm using this. Keep myself covered now. Stop. Look. So I was like, okay, we can finally put this away. But um, stop. Look, Tootie, I'm about to put you down. Um so let me hurry up but i just went through stages and gradually putting things away but as i started reading more in the old testament and going over the laws and stuff i started reading i was like okay we need to just do this like i'm only gonna eat here. what just the right things here. that are authorized bella stop the things that are authorized 
in the in in the book of Leviticus. So I started stating, I was like, okay. So then I transitioned from all of that stuff to simply the meats that I found in Leviticus. But I was still having some issues with some stuff. I'm like, okay. But at, at that point, I wasn't necessarily tracking it back to the meat. But I'm like, okay, well, I got a clean diet. I'm I'm eating clean. I'm only eating the foods from here. But <clears throat> I started having some other issues. Stop, Bella, and some 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 female issues. Even like with the the menstrual cycle and stuff like that. Whereby when I got sick with my son who is now 10 years old now, like I was like sick sick. And although they counted as like morning sickness, um, <clears throat> it was it was worse than like I had ever had. And that's when they told me I had gestational diabetes. But along with telling me I had gestational diabetes, they said, we actually think you actually have diabetes. And we just kind of caught it while you're pregnant. But they say your sugar is way too high. For you just to have gestational diabetes. So they gave me the metformin. Then, you know, I went through this whole process and I took it. It didn't, it didn't help. Then I was like, wait a minute. When I went back the second time, they said, okay, it's not help. They had me pricking my finger and stuff. I'm like, oh, this, this, this is becoming a bit much. You know, um, then they said, well, we're going to need to increase your dosage. Is this going to hurt my baby? No, the baby's going to be fine. I'm like, yeah, I don't believe that. So when, at that time, when they increased my dosage, <clears throat> I didn't take any more from that day. I had went to the, my doctor's appointment that day. Um, and I start researching. First, I start research, researching metformin. Can this hurt unborn babies or pregnant women? Is it safe for pregnant women to take? And um, then I was like, okay, how can I fix this other than taking medicine they prescribe? And that's what kind of started me on like the deep research of, okay, let me take control of my body because I'm too young for this, right? So he's 10. That was 10 years ago. I'm 42 now. That was when I was 32 years old, y'all. I have friends from high school that have died of heart attacks at 34 and 35. I'm like, yep, we're not playing this game. So that's what um, that's what actually kind of really put me in high gear with my health. So it, it's been a it's been years of kind of uncovering stuff and looking at what it does to my body because some of the things that they say are happen, even like growths and stuff, I started to see. Um, um, and even like moles popping up in different places. Like you see some people, they have moles over their faces. I had even been, I uh, started having moles that was, I was like, what, it, what is happening? Why am I getting moles? Like moles, like under my breast and on my side and on my neck. And I'm like, <clears throat> why is this happening? And I'm, you know, and I'm like really particular and a really clean person. I'm a scrub and that's like something foreign to my body. I wasn't born with that. Why is it here? Why is it here? <laughs> you know, so all those things I'm looking at, I'm telling my husband, I was like, he's like, babe, calm down. I don't, it just could be stress. I said, this is more than stress. It's something I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing. You know, so I, I was really walking through all this stuff. And so when that's when I first learned about Dr. Sabi 10 years ago, um, while I was pregnant with Josh. And so I started looking into Dr. Sabi and stuff. I'm like, what? We shouldn't be eating meat at all. You know, and I wasn't necessarily connecting it back with the scriptures just yet. Although he used the scripture in Genesis, mm -hmm. let the herb of the field be meat for you and stuff and healing for the nations. I was like, oh, well, yeah, clearly it says I've read that forever. Um, but he started helping it make sense for me. I'm like, okay, because... I, I guess I was leaning, Bella, stop. I was leaning more to like something might be wrong because I was experiencing things in my body, you know. So I'm like, and people, nobody likes to be sick. People to give their all their savings to be whole and to be well again, not to be in pain. So I'm serious about this thing. And so as I was going through looking, I was like, okay, well, let me do this. And so I immediately, I went cold turkey when I, I read all that stuff and listened to them videos from this last doctor's appointment. And I was having, at that point, I was having my doctor's appointments like every, every three weeks. So in the period of three weeks, I stopped. And I would say after that doctor's appointment, well, after that, doc, that doctor's appointment, where she increased, stop, where she increased my dosage of the metformin. I, I never I never put another metformin in my mouth. I I didn't prick my blood no more. And I didn't um and I didn't get that new prescription field where it increased my dosage. And um I started following what Dr. Sabi said. I, I completely went cold turkey from me. I stopped eating meat altogether. And at mind you at this point, at this point when I went cold turkey from me. I was only eating clean meats, what Leviticus had said. 
That's all I was eating, right? It's at that point. So I went cold turkey, meat, and dairy, right? And what began to happen was I began to, and, and within, um, let me tell you, within the matter from that doctor's appointment, where she up my dosage of the metformin so that I went back three weeks later, my sugar has stabilized itself. And the only thing I changed was stop eating meat and dairy. I was getting more fresh fruits and veggies in my body. I got a juicer and I was juicing fresh fruits and veggies. I was making sure I was drinking water. And it, 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 it really helped my morning sickness a lot, right? So I'm like, hmm. And so when I went back, and of course they got to prick me, my, my blood sugar was normal and everything. And they, they, she ran some other things. She said, oh, she said, okay. She said, so I see that the, the increase of the, the metformin is working. And I just looked at her. I said, no, that's not what helped me. <laughs> she just looked at me like she was taken aback for a second. I said, no. I said, I didn't even go get that prescription filled. I said, because I didn't believe when you told me, and I wasn't being nasty because I had a nice diet. I said, I didn't necessarily believe you when you told me that this medicine wasn't going to hurt my unborn baby. I said, but I felt like something was wrong. So I decided not to go get it fulfilled. And I started looking into stuff about my morning sickness and why I was experiencing different things. And I came across some stuff. And really, the only thing I did was change my diet. I stopped eating meat and dairy. I said, I simply made adjustments to my diet. And it corrected the issues I was having. Little girl. And so she just looked at me. She said, hmm. I said, now, why didn't you? Tell me that's all I had to do instead of just prescribing medicine to me. And she said, Miss Murphy, I'm going to just be honest with you. Mom. She said, because most mommy, people. You say you're done. I, okay, I know. Let, let me just get out this last few sentences and I'm going to cut it off. Hold on, y'all. She's getting patient with me. Okay, I said, so why, did, why didn't you. Oh, oh. Why didn't you tell me all I had to do was adjust my diet? She said, Miss Murphy, I'm going to be honest with you. She said, most people don't follow that advice. Most people just want... No, don't do that. Bella, girl, you're going to cut this off. Look, girl, she about, she about to kill my... Hold on. Okay, hold on. Hold on, hold on. I promise I'm almost going to look. Hold on. She said, most people, they want to keep eating what they're eating. They don't want to adjust their diets, and they just want a quick fix, and they just want the medicine. She said, so we just prescribed them the medicine. I said, but shouldn't that have been my choice? I said, shouldn't you have let me make that decision instead of just writing me off and just giving me the medicine like I was a hard head too? And she just looked at me. She said, Miss Murphy, keep doing what you're doing. I said, boy, we on to something. You know, so... Hallelujah. You know, I thank you who are, first of all, that I'm teachable and that I began to pay attention because I don't like to be in pain. Like, I don't like to suffer for the same thing that Keisha that got stoned for last week, right? We're going to pay attention. Wait, wait, what Keisha get stoned for now? What she do? Okay, we ain't supposed to do what? All right, yeah, we're going to choose the path of life, right? So, all right, y'all, with that being said, let me go. Tootie Baby is, is impatient with me right now. She about to start cooking her own breakfast. <laughs> All right, y'all. So I love y'all. I see y'all. Yeah, I know, Pooty. I see y'all back here tomorrow morning. Um, oh, seven thirty. It's Saturday. Mommy. Okay, seven thirty a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm gonna share this stuff with y'all. Give me a few moments, and I'll post the full scriptures, and um, I'll pin everything I said I was gonna do, y'all. Boker Tov. Shalom, everybody. Love y'all. Peace.